Hi, this is Muriwai Adele. You're listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. Yes, welcome back, Looney listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 295, and we are live streaming uh, the two high priests of Konshu, Rebecca and Ray. Rebecca, hello, hello. Hi. All the way from Tahiti. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's what happens when I don't wear a t-shirt. We all freak out a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, but you're looking uh, very uh, kind of relaxed and uh, as I I hear, a lot cooler. So that's really good. A lot cooler, yeah. Yes. Uh, and Looney's welcome. As I mentioned, this is live stream. So we do have a video up, up and running. Uh, so just a little disclaimer, any references to visuals will be on that. But you can go check us out on all the social platforms. Uh, what we have today, tonight, anywhere you are, is a moonshine. It is Moon Knight Black, White and Blood, issue three. So this should be really, really fun. Uh, stories by... Uh, Erica Schultz, Jim Zub, and Anne Nascenti. Uh, and yeah, Rebecca, so uh, a huge welcome back. I mean, we were only here last week to do a new comic book, and now we're here again. This is just the life of a Moon Knight fan these days. I, right? It's just like, this is, it's getting, <laughs> it's almost, it's it's quite, because like, come, come Halloween, it's going to go crazier. Um, yes. I guess yeah, that's I'll, our news for the week, is that we, we have will, uh, some crazy... We'll, We'll get into that. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a little bit of white noise, a bit of news. Yeah. Uh, uh, before the, any of that, of course, a big thank you to all our Patronies. Thank you so much, as well as our principal sponsors, Drew Toomes, Daniel Doing, Frank the Think Tank, Odin, Odin Sword, CLZ Comics, and Dreamland Comics from Schoenberg, Illinois. So, yeah, Rebecca, as you mentioned, uh, a yeah. bit of white a bit of white noise, a bit of yeah. moody news. Uh, Halloween, we've got announced... Yeah. Uh, a uh, crypt of shadows it's yep. a one shot we have no uh, idea i mean it doesn't it sounds like it's more of a little anthology like these mm-hmm. um because there's a lot of writers involved um so i think when we first saw the picture the cover we were all like oh they're all going to team up it's got both werewolf both werewolves by night blade's daughter moon knight elsa bloodstone mm-hmm. uh wolverine um, um is that it? I think that's it. Yeah. And somebody holding a candle that no one's entirely certain who that is. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. looks really, really cool. Yeah. It got plenty of hits on our social media. And, of course, uh, when it had been kind of broadcast out there, a lot of people are chomping at the bits. Uh, yeah, that's... everyone. Because I think initially because we thought it would be a team, but I think now it's going to be – because if you look at the list of writers, mm-hmm. um, there's quite a lot. Um, it includes, yeah, so, but one of them's Al Ewing, so that's exciting. Um, let's mm-hmm. finger, I'm, I've got my fingers crossed he'll be on Moon Knight, but, you know, you never know. Um, yes. Uh, because I'd love to see Al have a crack at Moon Knight. Um, I mean, the, cover, the cover looks really good. I mean, I'm not sure. Great. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure who the art, do you know the art inside? I, Is not it? off the top nah. of my head. I guess okay. it's a, a, I guess it's more than one again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Let's see if I can find it. Crypt of Shadow. I think it was actually on the Marvel site now. Okay. Is it called Crypt of Shadows. Crypt of Shadows. Yeah. Um, right, give me yeah. One looks, second. Um, just looks really good. I mean, like, look, we got a, we a, go. a terrifying a stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, Man Thing is the other one we missed. Mm. Um, so Chris Cooper is going to come back and do a story featuring Morbius. And mm-hmm. Victoria Montesi, which I believe was Marvel's first lesbian character, maybe. Is that oh. I wrong? I might be wrong. I think. Oh, I don't okay. know. Uh, so joining him with spine chilling sh- spine chilling tales of their own will be Al Ewing, Danny Law, who I would bet is doing Werewolf by Night, mm-hmm. uh, Rebecca Rowanhorse, Adam Warren, Chris Condon, uh, Karen Darbo, Jeff Shaw, and Ibrahim Mustafa, and more. <gasps> 
Oh, Ibrahim Mustafa. We yeah. know him from yeah, Marvel Comics Presents. I think he did that yeah. work with Benjamin Percy, which a lot of loonies loved. So yeah, I thought that was that. great. Oh, the covers yeah. Lenel Francis you. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. of course it is. Yeah, I'm, I've got the visual now of Elsa and Wolverine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very Lionel you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, I mean, so loonies, a, a lot of excitement happening there uh on the comic front uh, of course also as well a little reminder i saw on our uh, our group page rebecca next week uh, we won't be covering it because it's a like a, like a kind of cameo we might cover it at some point yes we, we mentioned about bundling it together right yeah and, because like what? now i think jed said well, well let's talk about it yes uh so jed tweeted as well this um and don't forget, next week is Iron Cat issue two, but also issue five of Strange. We get Shadow Knight, issue aka four, right? Oh, issue four, sorry. Issue four. Um, yeah, uh, aka Randall Specter, uh, which you know we we've kind of we broke in our white noise, you know, ages ago yeah. because it was released. But that's exciting. But I think I think issue five has Mark in. That's right. I think yes. Jed said in that interview. So. Maybe we'll bundle those two together. And, and I saw together. I saw on your Discord comment, Rebecca, you said, in Jed we trust, and certainly. <laughs> I don't think I said that, but like. You didn't? Uh, oh, I, I thought that was, oh, okay. No, was but you. I'm glad no. someone did, because, yes, in yes. Jed we do trust. Yes, and uh, yeah, I'm going to have to pick it up. I've been thinking of picking up Strange anyway. Like, it's been, people like, have been I like saying it's really stuff. good. But I yeah. just I have too much right now, and there are know, too many Moon Knight yeah. issues, and also like next issue of Never. Avengers Forever. <laughs> next issue of Avengers Forever has Thor as Iron Fist. Wow! So are you gonna are you gonna cover that? that or not? Uh, I don't know. I guess that'll be a sort of if we're looking for something. I've I've elected to buy it, so I'm the test case, like, <laughs> and I'll let the guys because it's multiversal. So like um. Yeah, they, they've got like it's a but this story is going to be about Thor getting the Iron Fist. So I thought I'd test it. So right. um, there's just a lot of like comics coming out at the moment, and you know we've also got the Moon Knight Annual. Yeah, uh, we've also got Moon Knights and Ms. Marvel the coming annual, up. Course, yeah, yeah, that's another October one. How so like cool we're just having this like I mean it's great, it's amazing, but I don't think there's a month between now and. October where there isn't kind of two Moon Knight appearances per month, which is yeah crazy how how is. good that is. Like um which what yeah. world are we living in, Rebecca? When this we is... we would never have predicted this one when we started with the uh Lemire run. Yeah. Doing the it, it, Exactly. Yeah. Well, I got reminded and I have it now as my avatar. Uh, a, a shout out to Brian Biggie from Inner Demons, a Ghost Rider podcast. He put on to me the fact that you can become you can have an avatar of moon knight in disney plus uh, you know the oh the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah it's like who would have thought that <laughs> you know you can actually know. have moon i mean look, a, I've, yeah. I've still got grogu because that would be hard to, to move from but yeah. <laughs> well now that's fair enough i, I can oh let's see who's can... sorry i've got a yeah, who's oh that's mario i see so mario yeah. Has mentioned that was uh that was mario saying in jed we trust absolutely yeah no yeah, I, I saw the comment and smiled and nodded but yeah yeah i wasn't gonna <laughs> pretend it was me <laughs> uh i'm just thinking off the top of my head the other bits of news because the things kind of trickle in right um and i can't remember if we covered it in our last episode rebecca but uh, there were, I can't, they call, are they emojis or something? They're little plush toys. Yeah, available. yeah, they've made little plush toys of the Twitter icons yes. or like the, the little emojis they did for the show, which is cute. Mm -hmm. So they're yeah. all at uh, San Diego Comic Con, which is today. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the first day of it's today. And oh. who knows? I mean, like, I think the Marvel next big thing panel is Saturday. So there may be Gosh. some more news then. Yeah, I've already subscribed to um, the YouTube, the Marvel San Diego. Oh, you, know, you love watching that. I never. I, I love. I'm you terrible know? at watching YouTube. Yeah, but I you're love... really good because you submit questions and everything. Oh, Do you? Yeah, oh I mean, no, that's. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah like... The first time I did, like, yeah, not, but yeah. like, I, I just like keeping, like, having it on in the background when I can. No, just, I just, yeah. I'm really bad at getting distracted while at work, and uh... then I'm just sleeping all the time. But yeah. no, so I mean, like, if I had the energy, I would also mm -hmm. do it because it's very entertaining. 
it's um, yeah i mean i do like getting psyched up for like uh comic-con yeah but, um, yeah and then we have d23 in september and one of my friends who's going has promised to text me every single thing that they announced for marvel wow well, as it happens ask, so you know i was about to ask do you think there'll be like any big announcements at uh san diego for marvel, uh, who or, knows uh, well they've got know. they've got a whole age panel i think uh for the tv and film but like i think people because d23 is only in september and that's like um, the big disney one yeah so probably. um i think i think what's most likely to happen is we'll get things that we already know about mm -hmm. at comic-con but like more about them like we might get the black panther trailer we might oh, get yeah. werewolf by night officially announced and they or a bit yeah. more about it maybe a trailer for that uh and then maybe a few hints about some of the big films like you know yeah. what's when you'll see x next and right um whereas yeah. i think d23 they might reveal the phase five like this is what we're gonna do uh, and that yeah, hopefully the big... we'll then know if, what if there's plans for moon Knight. so oh my gosh that would be so yeah. cool so that's yeah. in september keep your eyes and ears peeled loonies uh that's certainly something worth worth checking out yeah um yeah no no that's great uh i'll try to put you know this white noise in in the show notes as I remember. <laughs> uh but crypto shadows yeah as, as you said rebecca and the emojis um you, there are lots of like loki of course moon knight um black panther i think and one division that sort of thing so um you can get them them for i think 16 us dollars oh. Uh, it's not so, too bad. It's a little yeah. bit of a con, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, yep. And and uh, San Diego. Um, that's yeah. That's going to be exciting. Exciting. Uh, any other? Hmm. I'm wondering any other. Like news? I think of. I think so as well. Oh, that was what I was going to say. Uh, sorry, Rebecca. You're talking about. We always have a cat interruption for the first time. Flippy is with me here. Yeah. Um, he's pushing over some of finn's toys so he's still out of the picture but you mean his, <laughs> his toys his, toy. oh, his, toy. his toys his toys i don't know where he's asleep somewhere he was on me just before we started <laughs> <laughs> oh he'll probably make an appearance before the end for yeah. sure uh one of the other things that's right rebecca you please indulge me uh you you mentioned world of wakanda um i think it's been announced for next year uh, a submariner namor series uh, comic book series limited i think it's oh yeah, yeah 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 no it mm. has yeah 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 mm. yeah Christopher so Campbell. i mean oh okay right. yeah, I yeah, didn't know. Oh, yeah. You, yeah more than i do but yeah um that's exciting. i pay attention to, to <laughs> name more <laughs> yeah i mean you would i mean it makes sense the big it's obviously the the, the secret's out he's going to be in world of yeah Wonder. yeah um so yeah marvel you know jumping on that you're right sure. that's another one that i have to buy <laughs> well yeah look i with namer i i don't think it will I'm, i know it's terrible to say but i don't think it will last long, long maybe 10 to 12 issues i think no i think it's i think it's only a mini oh, it's a mini, anyway. is it? i think it oh, is okay. a quick look. um to be really honest rebecca i don't mind these mini series i actually quite like them actually me too it allows... yeah no it's five issues it's five oh issues. perfect perfect yeah. well that's already that's going to be on the standing order yeah don't worry. yeah don't you worry marvel um scotty from kings if you're listening <laughs> please <laughs> add that on <laughs> uh well if there's no more news rebecca shall we get straight yeah, into our it. moonshine uh, let's have some moonshine. Yes, just back in time, Rebecca. Awesome. That's <laughs> <laughs> that worked really well. Uh, Anyway, loonies, we are here, of course, to review the latest and greatest from the Moon Knight comics available out now. Thank you, Conchu. Uh, is uh, Moon Knight Black, White and Blood issue three uh, released, of course, July the 20th, uh, 2022 this year. Uh, we have the first story, uh, writer Erica Schultz and penciler David Lopez. Actually, I didn't realize it was 
David Lopez when I was looking at it. Anyway, um, story two, writer Jim Zub with a penciler. I should have given this name to you, Rebecca. <laughs> um, Jabril Morissette fan. Yeah. It's not too bad. And story three, Anne Asante with penciler Stefano Raphael. Uh, and so we've got cover art by Frank Cho and uh, and a variant cover by Nika Klein, which is also, I think, in a virgin um, cover format. So, Rebecca, just putting up the the uh, covers so far. So this is the Frank Cho. I would yeah. never have. No, no I Frank wouldn't have Cho. guessed that was the mind. You can kind of tell by the clean lines, but I wouldn't have. Yeah, the clean it, lines. Yeah. yeah, but really, really quite yeah. nice. We've used that as a backdrop for for this video, uh, and if this works, does that work? Yes, uh, Nico Klein, uh, his one as well. Rebecca, um, have you got both? I the just went with Nick Klein's. Oh, you have. You went for this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. It is a nice one. I must say. I love how you're always uh, surprised by my choices. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah I, I don't know yeah i guess by default i think i uh, just get the regular yeah cover, yeah but, no i got um, i i still yeah. assume that the treasury edition will have all the covers in which is why i haven't yep. gone like too crazy for them yeah it's a beautiful cover yeah. so it's got no, they, um, i mean those... like we've had a run of the they've got most of them have been really really nice so mm, yeah there's actually been runs of i mean i haven't we haven't oh Unfortunately, I haven't been keeping track of it with the Jed McKay run. There have been, like, I've been to my LCS and I see the variant covers mm -hmm. of, like, issue 12 and 13. It's like, oh, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, oh, I didn't know that they, yeah, they had them. Maybe I haven't been paying attention, but, um, yeah. Mm. Uh, so uh, listeners who may be listening, just a quick audio, uh, a visual description. Um, so Frank Cho, predominantly red, Moon Knight on a Moon which kind of makes sense considering the Anna Senti run yeah, uh, and yeah. the Senti story. And Nico Klein, uh, Moon Knight, really cool one, uh, just uh, on a chimney stack with some pigeons. I know it sounds silly, um, mm -hmm. but him holding some crescent darts and a blood kind of crescent moon yeah. behind him. So pretty cool. Uh, as always, for these new issues, it's available in floppy format, uh, but also in digital as well. So you can get that from Marvel or from i'm assuming kindle i've really have you have you dabbled in comicsology again ever not really a little bit me, but me not too. hugely i've kind of gone off it i do i do it as amalgamated as i you know as, as, as briefly as i have to yeah I, I mean i just go straight to the marvel app um to get mm -hmm. stuff and yeah yeah just uh so anyway we do have like uh, you know, I haven't been able to uh, write a synopsis for these no. three stories, but there, we have a solicit synopsis, Rebecca. Yeah. Uh, would you be so kind? Let me just cue up the music. <laughs> uh, would you be so kind as to give us the the bare bones yeah, for the solicit, just these? Yeah. Um, you ready? A team of heisters flagged down the wrong taxi, Jake Lockley's, in a story by Erica Schultz and David Lopez. Jim Zub and Jibril Morissette fan pit the midnight missionary against a sinister cult. And Anne the sentient Stefano Raphael blast the silver crusader toward the moon itself in a caper situated aboard a rocket launch. All wrapped up in an elegant cover by Frank Cho. Yeah, so really, in a huge nutshell, that is um, that is the the gist of this issue. Very three disparate stories, yeah, yeah. Rebecca. So it will be interesting to get your take on how this works holistically and as an, an anthology, <laughs> and and also like how you liked it, like you know, just in general. Um, uh, <laughs> just just looking, neither here. of us have like neither of us have uh, scored it. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think it's Mario has said the comicsology web reader has improved a bit. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, That's I've good. heard they've done some changes. I've not checked it out. Okay. I'll, I'll check it when they get the, more kinks out and it, mm. it's, it's a lot better. But, um, yeah, no, just happy with the Marvel app and the DC app, dare I say. Yeah. yeah. 
and Valiant. What? Yeah, I don't. I guess I don't even get Valiant um, in digital. So that's I don't okay. really need to. I got all of Valiant, and then I, I, yes. I don't know. I don't know if I, I haven't really bought as much of their new stuff. Oh, you haven't. I've got everything except for. Um, I really, I really love to get Archer and Armstrong again. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, again, money funds. So I've, I've just gone for. Uh, what have I gone for? Shadow Man and uh, what's EXO? I can't remember. Oh, um, Harbinger as well. Oh, yeah, Harbinger yeah. As well. Um, so listeners, sorry, before I get even more sidetracked, uh, if you haven't listened before, what Rebecca and I will do is that we'll go through, and my gosh, Rebecca, at least you've done the homework. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got, got some, uh, we'll go through some aspects of, uh, we'll just bounce around from three of the stories. Rebecca, I think that probably works best. Yeah. Um, and uh yeah we'll key, key moments uh, and then we'll just dive into anything to do with writing art themes characterizations or references um to the run so uh, the world is our oyster rebecca uh, first pick which what, what would you like to kind of focus okay on? so the first thing that stood out to me because we never leave with mm-hmm. art generally is mm-hmm. that um i liked all the arts apart from a few quibbles like mm-hmm. I didn't really like um, the Moonlight Smirk in the first in this first story. Oh uh, yes, I found yep. that slightly. Uh, it reminded me of one of the Deadpool ones. Um, was it oh. um, Madman? Mad- oh, Madman. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, Mad Madcap. Madcap. Yeah, reminded me of that. I didn't yeah. like that so much. Um, ah. But generally, I liked all the art. And also yeah. really interesting. The second one has the most interesting art, I think, in terms of paneling and, and things. That one up. That, um... oh, that's not it. <laughs> you get there. Sorry, bit. Sorry, I'm oh, yeah. you told me to go all over the place. So but how yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, there's some yeah. Yeah. like split like that one. So that's a very mm-hmm. example of like how the panels are being used to to sort of I love yeah the story the and in some action. Mm-hmm. So um, there's a lot more red in this issue, generally, all three, across all three. Less yeah, in the I third to... one, but, like, there's just, I don't yeah. know why. It just seemed like the, yeah, I get a lot less in the third one. But the first mm-hmm. two seemed a lot of red, which is still within the remit. Although the first, the first yep. one's almost orange rather than red, which put me off a little bit. Mm-hmm. A lot of orange. And also, yeah. my slight criticism of the first one, if you're going to have bank robbers dressed up as Spider-Man and Daredevil, why is mm-hmm. your third one not Deadpool? And then you've got Team Red. That is that is very true. Like, I, like, I, I mean, I, I like kinda... that it's Black Widow, I assume, Black Widow. Yeah. Yes. But um, I guess you're, you're I, when right. I went back and reread it, I was like, why, why is it not like Deadpool? And then you've got this, like, yeah. but, Red. you know, like, it's, yeah, it's that's, fine. That's it's true. not really a criticism. It's just a opportunity yeah. that i don't think was fully grabbed oh yeah i, I uh, had a look at it as well and, and as i was reading it um yeah daredevil and spider-man were apparent and then i kind of looked back and said oh yeah that's black yeah. widow uh, and then i thought immediately oh okay i see erica schultz is uh must be looking at like a street level you know yeah night street level but then again deadpool fits right into yeah, that yeah, as well yeah. so uh i'm not really sure i like i did like how the red was used in the first one that was more noticeable for me yeah i guess in the fact that uh, mostly jake lockley's um tail lights or the, the yeah, black lights yeah. at the back i thought that was really cool uh there there are a few examples of them kind of pushing the boundary of what they can do similar to uh the second story of issue one mm-hmm. You know, how you, yeah, as you said, yeah. you get the oranges and you get a bit more of a, a hue of a red. Um, but, yeah, I, I love the art for this as well. And I, I thought, um, yeah, I didn't mind too much the, the Moon Knight uh, smirk. I loved the, the idea. thing that I felt a little bit like, I'm not, I don't love it. But um, the overall, the, that's, that's such a small, that's only shown in like two or three panels. It's nothing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I thought if... <laughs> absolutely nitpicking here and 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 you know this is a little quibble i thought if we go back to the first bit here it, it sets the tone yeah. like one of the robbers actually kills one of the security guards yeah. like blam and you see kind of the blood of course then i thought like why are they persevering with this taxi driver mm-hmm. that's being such a cheeky what bugger to them yeah. you know 
wouldn't they, wouldn't they just shoot him and kick him out of the cab and, and I mean possibly go? it's a fun idea though like what if a bunch yeah. of criminals it is oh it is I mean it's such a yeah. great one line pitch is like what if a bunch of criminals jumped in lock lock is yeah. up to do it oh yeah you know um yeah the concept far outweighs you know the little quibble yeah uh, yeah absolutely but um yeah it is a very nifty idea and we don't often get Jake Lockley centric no and it's stories, and it's kind of so. fun it's you get the reference to Gina's you know he offers them to stop and have a bite to eat which, again very strange <laughs> <laughs> and so I mean like, look, obviously my biggest quibble with it is the dialogue with Moon Knight and Jake and like I find that quite mm -hmm. weird considering now we've kind of we're so used to the, the run like with Jed's run where Moon Knight isn't that sort of voice in your head whether it's an yeah. altar or they're trying to I don't know what else they could be trying to show but like so it's weird to me that suddenly but it, you know I understand like you know these are all anthology stories i i wouldn't necessarily want it in the main run mm -hmm. but you know yeah and and i think it probably uh, the idea uh lasted i mean the length of the story was pretty much it, it yeah it, it exhausted yeah. that idea like you couldn't really go any further with it. it was a nice quick little idea yeah it worked really well in this format it actually i think i think it was, it was a my good favorite. yeah it was a yeah. good use of the format which mm, they've not yeah, been so yeah right because we saw in issue one like it was almost as if hickman had a whole saga yeah like, out. And then, <laughs> oh hickman's like, gonna be at the uh marvel's uh -huh. next big thing panel so maybe he does someone, one loony please uh please ask him if, if anyone's there uh yeah but um yeah i thought this was really really cool yeah. uh the premise is obviously jake takes out another little this is absolutely a micro quibble uh lack of a mustache there rebecca yeah you know, yeah say, i mean like we all moza. love the face um, and, and he has it for <laughs> later on so that's all right um yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah i think um, it's a pretty fun idea that don't stop till you reach the water and him taking it very literally we get detective yeah, flint yeah. we get gina's you know yeah. it's just I, nice. I kind of yeah, I mean, I kind of wasn't surprised at, um, you know, like take us to the water. It was no surprise that he, I was expecting him to to drive them into oh, the yeah, water. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so I don't know whether that was meant to be like a, a surprise or reveal to us, but it, I think it was signposted at the beginning yeah. anyway. He goes, um, but beautiful, again, beautiful art. If it to look over here, just the backdrop that Lopez can do, yeah. like the Ferris wheel and, and the tower it in the background. Nice. And I, mm, and and I love the um the lines for the movement of the cut the speed because it's all about the car speeding right yeah, so yeah. um so that was pretty cool as well um I'm just thinking oh it's not this one there was, there is a reference that I yes this is it actually um at the end I know this is probably very slight mm -hmm. I wonder I'm going to ask Erica possibly hopefully mm -hmm. uh, about it uh, Detective Flint yeah, okay, yeah sure sure Lockley. And I don't know if uh, Looney's remember, but in the uh, Ellis, oh God, I'm gonna, oh no, in the in, in the uh, in the the Houston run, mm -hmm. uh, he kind of frames Flint like he always goes, sure, sure, sure. Oh, that's and, really like, it's, sweet. Yeah. So again, Erica Schultz puts that in here. Sure, sure, Lockley. Um, I, I only know that because we did that audio reproduction of the whole issue, right? And uh, I did the voice of Flint, and the amount of times he says "sure, sure" mm -hmm. is actually a lot more noticeable when you when you pay attention to it. Um, so yeah, I I think maybe that might be a reference to the the cool. Houston run. Um, but yeah, very very cool indeed. Uh, so yeah, I mean the second uh, issue. I mean I know I said would bounce around, but it's mm -hmm. kind of easy to to jump now here. I don't know what to. Th think of this one i mean i i do love um i do like jim zub's writing you know most if not all the time uh, it was a strange concept for me um the takeaway i guess was adding to the law in the fact that conchu has uh identified a future yeah midnight. yeah mm. um which is weird but not that weird but i i kind of i liked it but i think it could have either done with a little bit longer 
or mm. a bit like I think I, it's an interesting idea. It's like you've got Moon Knight going off to save someone from a religious cult. Um, yeah. You're pitting faith against zealotry, which is obviously something uh, Marx um, has quite a lot of experience in faith and a little bit of experience mm -hmm. with the zealotry. And it pits him with this conversation with Konshu, who's beautifully drawn, about sort of, oh, yeah. you know, like whether it's better to just like, this girl has potential to be any gods and isn't it better to sort of already mark her as like conscious and uh mark gets to make that choice um not much of a choice i guess but I, yeah i i it didn't 100 percent work for me as a story but yeah. i do like watching yeah. him rescue kids and yeah i think it's interesting but to play with uh aspects of moon knight and faith which is essentially what jed's doing in a different way and this is taking mm -hmm. it a different angle like what happens when he comes up against enemy that's faith yeah yeah I, I, I definitely that was one of the themes i guess and the topics that i wanted to instill in there yeah but i mean um, look we also know conscious uh manipulative dick and he's being manipulative yeah. dick so i quite like that it's just whether this is actually whether Conchu's lying and he just wants this girl for some other reason or whether mm -hmm. this oh, yeah, true. could be a future <sighs> Moon Knight, you know? Yeah. I'm so gullible, Rebecca. See, I, I just took Conchu's want at face value. I didn't even consider that there might be some kind of sinister purpose underneath it. But mm -hmm. um, I was already just dazzled at the fact that, oh, okay, so Moon Knight is actually going to be part of this almost ritualistic thing of the, of the current Avatar having to almost um i don't know what you say christen or bless the, yeah, the future yeah. avatar um with the the moon it's a nice, thing it's a nice idea yeah it's a not yeah it's just, a way, for me similar but it's yeah. also a little bit creepy <laughs> yeah i mean similar to you I, I i mean nothing against it i thought it was a solid story it just didn't really peak peak for me mm -hmm. at all it just it kind of like you, you got dropped in into the middle of the action and the action just kind of went ahead and there was a, a few reveals but uh yeah again i think it suff may have suffered from the, the short really format. love the uh, arm the the oh, art it's fantastic I, I also thought it was a bit funny when like conchu had to sort of tell mark he could go with the speed of of the moonlight and i'm like well what is the speed of moonlight number one it's like the speed <laughs> of light yeah. surely it's and, speed of light, and right? number yeah. two why would mark well, how would mark forget that so yeah um but that just made me laugh a little bit there were, i mean overall i liked it i it wasn't like oh i'm hating this and the art is gorgeous yeah oh but no, i just too. i did laugh at yeah. that bit as well like country going don't worry you can go faster and it's like okay yeah. <laughs> well that was another thing as well i thought uh it was a nice introduction or maybe a, a reminder that moon knight can um showcase these superhuman feats yeah, you know, if Conchu yeah. allows I mean, him. we have to remember this isn't necessarily being written for us yes so yeah. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't yeah, hurt exactly. if there's a little bit more exposition yeah but i mean like i found it you know quite exciting the fact that he his speed yeah so yeah that was cool. almost increased so it's like okay so Conchu can actually endow him yeah. with um many things if he wanted to uh just showing a um a page here again i think we get quite a i mean off the back of the first story where the robber just shoots a security guard we get moon knight just like leaving these zealots to to fall to their death i thought that was pretty um pretty grisly uh so no punches pulled here from um for any moon knight story uh yeah uh apart from that so we've got the as you're saying, the faith versus um, zealots, we have this young girl, Merwit. Yeah. Very strange. Is that the first time you've heard that name, Rebecca? Uh, no, I've never heard first of it. I, I, there is a Hebrew name, Mirit, without the okay. W, but I've not heard it with the W. So. Right. And the uh, the only other question I had for this is, oh, again, sorry, just showing some panels here, the great showcase of Moon Knight's speed, like he jumps down from the ceiling or whatever, and as the, the knife is plunging it's to amazing. sacrifice his girl, so he, he gets there in time, so yeah. it's super fast. Um, the only the question I had here, Rebecca, and maybe it's nothing 
so this last panel yeah. at the end where he's carrying her, so that shows did he die and get resurrected again? Was he was he stabbed in the back or like, impaled? Or? I, I, if he did, it was without a pause. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, I mean, like, um, uh, like not not as in like dying and like. No, no, no. I understand that, but like, it, it yeah. was like literally, there's no not within this story. Yeah, or is it just? I mean, I, maybe he just has blood to... on his cape. I don't know. Maybe yeah, he got stabbed I, in the back, but didn't die. I do really like how it ends with the, with them say with her saying you're the good guy, and he goes, "Yes, yeah, that's what they tell me." And sometimes I even believe it. I thought it was yeah. very nice. Oh, it's very cool. Uh, it is very cool. Yeah. I, I just it just seemed like we were asked to look at that yeah wound on his back, and I was just trying to figure. I out I don't what. know. I find that confusing, mm. honestly. I also mm. thought I because so I, was... I saw it and I thought I don't remember him getting stabbed. Like was my yeah. initial. Yeah, my initial thing was okay. Was and like you see his back when he's jumping. There's no. There's no stabbing yeah. there. So, so a little it has to happen in that final fight and it's a little shortcoming um when oops a little shortcoming when it comes to to that they, they may not have kind of signposted that enough i think for us because yeah i was left confused. I, I just thought oh was he was he mortally wounded yeah and, I didn't just, know. and if he like, was i can't see oh well. it could have been it could have been this one here I mean, when the energy goes crackling crackling out yeah that's the um, only time he gets that, it but it's not well, unless the it's knife like not, follows that energy line, and st it's not obvious. <laughs> it's not obvious. So yeah, maybe if they had kind of although it, it does a little it bit more. does kill all of the priests, and it doesn't kill him. He and he says, yes. um, "So the nasty." He says, so, "I but I'll live." So maybe he does something happens there. That's definitely where. The, yeah, maybe Conchu protects him. Yeah, yeah and he, he kind of like a, a normal person would have died, but he kind of. Um, survives it so again shows the supernatural like the influence uh from conchu there and as you say rebecca a lot of red here I think, yeah i think largely because of the these guys in the right i like that it's much darker um, i do prefer this to the orange in the first one yeah but yeah, um, agree as well you know if yeah. it, and it just suits the art as well yeah yeah and and i do yeah i do like it when moon knight Converses with Konshu, yeah, you know, and, and just, he's kind of just at his ear. He's huge. Yeah, it is a very good. Yeah, it's huge kaiju uh, Konshu again. <laughs> kaiju, where, where is it? Where is it? Uh, just flicking through here. You're very yeah, there's a big one. reveal. No, next one. Oh, no, go back. <laughs> where did you miss it? Where is it? I can't believe it. Anyway, we'll <laughs> find... there is is there. No, it's not. There's a huge one, one of him. Doing the wrong way. The huge one. It's where he's talking about putting no. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that, that, if Keep it, going. have I missed a page? I, I don't know. I think you may have done. Let's go. Uh, not, it's not there. Not there. Not it's there. It's the next one. No, that's you're it. missing a page. I might be missing a page. You're here. missing a page. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I do. I do remember. But the he's huge, like a um, movie is like huge, like room size. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, so the only other thing I thought reference wise here, and again, it might be a stretch, Rebecca, but we got that really classic look of the Bill Sinkevich in volume one yeah. of Moon Knight doing kind of almost like a spiral yeah, down we love and he's fighting. fighting. I hate walking on yeah. them. Love watching it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and funnily enough, the the zealots here are, are into the coils, so the <laughs> coils are are eternal. Uh, but yeah, I think that was a nice little thing. I think also Benjamin Percy and uh, Ibrahim Mustafa did something mm -hmm. in the I Marvel Comics presents as well. Yeah. Mm. So I think maybe that's a little callback. Um, but yeah, a very yeah a solid story. I still like I you know I I like the the first one um, more. Yeah. Um, oh, there we go. There, there it is. is. Yeah. Yes, there's a huge conchu. Sorry, podcast listeners, um, just flicking through the pages mm -hmm. there, but there's a huge conchu. Um, what did he say? Yes, yes, sell. Vessel. You're a vessel. What are you talking about? A vessel. Oh, God. Yeah, of course. Oh, God. <laughs> I know you've I just woken up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, vessel. Come That's listen it. to me right. rag on Ray for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> um 
And so, again, the, the final story is, like, again, a large departure. It reminded me immediately, Rebecca, of the Hickman run. And I al- almost, when I started it, thinking, <laughs> is this meant to be a continuation of it? And only because it's, like, cosmic. I think right? it's, it's one of the weird. first, it's the first story of any of these anthologies so far that's had a separate um, separate colour artist, Chris Sotomayor, and separate right. letterer, this is Corey Petter. Okay. I think all the others have always been done by the... Uh, artist okay um a little interesting well yeah i mean i'm not well versed enough in lettering to i mean i think they've all done i think the others have done decent jobs so like um oh yeah absolutely absolutely um but what were your impressions of of astro astro nuts right so (laughs) the first time i read it i found it quite confusing and was a little bit lost in it and i don't know if it's because i was just you're right, I had the sort of Hickman flashbacks. <laughs> I, was, I just don't know if I understand. Oh, no, not again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I, it's not like I hated it either, but it's just like it just took, no. <laughs> it was just like you go from these stories you're expecting to this sudden, okay, what am I doing? And I read it again, and it's a fairly, it's an interesting story. And like, I can see, yep. again, the elevator pitch for it, but it's not 100% successful for me. I do like the title, Astronauts, I love the uses of reds and the art yep. again, fantastic. I'm not entirely That's sure cool. moon shaped air uh, rockets and stuff would work <laughs> aerodynamically. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's a little bit on the nose about billionaires going to the moon and is Fair even enough. a billionaire. I mean, Oh, yeah, that's right. He's not that. I mean, I mean I, well, who knows? They could just translate him. I mean, they could, yeah. but I don't think we've ever seen, ever thought of him as that wealthy. Like, no. Um, no. I really like the art in it. I think it's very good. Um, yeah, that's really cool. It, it, it's almost. I, it's, I like I said, the, the elevator pitch of Send Moon Knight to the Moon as a sort of promo thing for one of these. Uh, and then he has to, like, stop someone mining it for. It's, it's mm-hmm. fine. I just, yeah, I, I, I feel it may have um, lost its edge because of the Hickman uh, story. Maybe first. because if if I had read this and go, wow, yeah, like Moon Knight in space, like that's yeah, cool. yeah, um, and I just couldn't help but compare it to. We do get the, the Jake Hickman. moustache in the next. If you go to that, <laughs> the, the amazing page that we're about to the next one. Oh, oh, that, oh, that, that that's when. Oh, yeah, yeah I that. recall. Yeah, absolutely yeah, good. amazing. That would and paneling, different... background, the use of the reds, and, and change of style. Yeah, those flashbacks. If you look at how that is compared to the the action, like in the really in the situ, like in it. situ, yeah. Yeah, um, I I like the fact. I'm not sure it's it's almost the Declan Shelby, but I'm thinking it almost leans on into the Capuccio Moon Knight costume. Uh, yeah, is... there's definitely when they start getting into the with him trying to rescue what's going on. There's a definite yeah. suit that looks like Capuccio. Um, I like yeah. that they they lose the the anti gravs turned off, and so you get the mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. everything floating around. That's cool. All the noodles and you. The noodles are red, like the yeah, whatever the, the she's painting um, her nails. And... Oh, I didn't notice that. I uh, don't understand why yeah. when she jumps, she's always doing these like crazy ballet. <laughs> it's just, like, yeah, silly. she must be. Uh, yeah, it is a bit. Um, yeah, it's a bit strange. I, I will have to do a reread. You will. I think you'll get more. I definitely got more out of it the second time. But then, and then he's flirting at the end. It's just like, I don't know. It just seemed, it felt a bit like, does he love the moon? Does he have this, like, we still haven't really defined that kind of like, we, I think we've talked about whether the moon waxes and wanes his powers and stuff like that. Um, And then I'm played with that before in things. But they're talking about how he's he's gonna protect the moon. It's like I, I'm yeah. not sure. I'm not sure that's part of his remit is protect the moon. But like yeah, um, I I, I, yeah. I like seeing it being played on. So yeah. I, especially, and this is the perfect place to sort of play with it. 
but then that flirting yeah. was just like it was number one it was just bad flirting um <laughs> but also it just kind of left me on a all right flirty moon night let's go <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I, i'd agree with you i mean it although for all intents and purposes it it sounds logical like moon knight and he's got some sort of affiliation with the moon within this anthology series this is the yeah. perfect place to play with that. yes i would not yeah. really like That's... to see it come up all that often again yeah, I mean, it's an opportunity, mm -hmm. isn't it, to, to kind of like really test the boundaries of what it means to be Moon Knight. And, but I, I think with this story in particular, Rebecca, and as you were saying, it just it does seem a, a bit weird um, because it is on like a, a cosmic scale. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess to see Moon Knight in cosmic in a cosmic arena is strange because you see his affiliation with the Moon via Konshu, and and so it tends to be more like you know. Conchu the deity and and him being the representative of the moon mm -hmm. when moon knight actually comes in contact with literally the moon it, it's just it's a bit strange it to is, me it's yeah. like it's not, it doesn't it doesn't i did definitely but it enjoyed makes sense. It i mean more the second time yeah. so yeah yeah well um, i'm like i said i'm gonna have to read it the second time and the, the flirting um if anything rebecca hats off to the use of the red there with the blush yeah <laughs> yeah no that that did really uh, love. that no. was a little bit uh, i mean like, like it's a um, really deep blush <laughs> it is a deep yeah. blush yeah I, I, I like how perceptive moon knight is you know he he he's kind of um what is it it's kind of like in poker where you kind of uh, uh the tell their tell, yeah. their tell. Yeah. yeah so he's picked up a tell um in that but yeah it was a it was a strange tale I'm not really sure what to make of it. I, I, I enjoyed it a lot more, dare I say, than the Hickman one. Um, only because I it, found it easier to follow than the Hickman one. Yes, and and story wise, and it, it seemed a lot more rounded. The art and the yeah. paneling better, and yeah, it had the beginning, middle, and end. Um, beginning, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but like yeah, I said, I think I mean, the Hickman one swung harder for something different and out there. Oh, it, it swung big time. Yeah. He really rota rotated the shoulders there. <laughs> um yeah um the art is good uh yeah um i don't know anything else um you mentioned it's really weird um balletic uh kind of yeah poses she's almost like i, I love her this is what i was going to talk about so this page art wise it's just so inspired just i think beautiful. the panels it's weird and it just you i know i love it i don't it. know how you come I, up I with think... it but it's incredible yeah no yeah and that I'm assuming is purely the yeah, artist, I imagine like, so, you know, yeah. and the Cindy would have said, however, what, six, seven panels yeah. to show this, I'm going to show it like this. Yeah. And it looks really, really good. Um, and as, as you mentioned, reiterating, I mean, even the previous story as well, um, by Morissette fan, the, the layouts were just really, I think, inspired. Yeah. So, it's always fun to um, see people like play with it and, and it mm, do it successfully. Uh, some of the dialogue I thought from this was uh, a little strange, like this one in particular, Moon Knight. Uh, you want to turn the moon into a gas station, a pit stop. The moon is not a pit stop. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't. I, I get the idea that he wants to mine the moon and yeah. kind of and reap that's, it. That's but, exactly what we're going for, I think. So. Yeah, but I just, I, I think, I thought some of the dialogue just mm -hmm. may have fallen a little flat there. But overall, I, I, you know, I enjoyed it. Um, as as mentioned three very different stories um fantastic art i think in all of them mm. uh so yeah i mean rebecca if if you're willing uh what would you do you want me to go first or yeah you no you go this? first on <laughs> um okay let me uh i'm just gonna after last week my... when i vastly outranked mm. yours <laughs> I might give this a a good um I tell you I I think I still enjoyed this uh I give this a I give this a 7 yeah a 7 out of 10 I was I think I was, was, I, was I think the same I was toying with 6.5 but I think you're right I did actually enjoy it 7 Oh yeah exactly so that's right I I was toying with 7 6.5 but I think it just had that little bit more to make the whole experience yeah, yeah. Uh, enjoyable. So I'll give you, I'll put that in there as well, seven out of 10, just before I forget. So we both, Rebecca and I, both solid round, a boy. Um, 
loony listeners. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, please, if you haven't uh, checked out this issue, please go grab it. It, it is a it is a fun ride, and it's great to see. Just, um, I think it's it's really starting to gain momentum, mm -hmm. Rebecca. I mean, we had a, a, a kind of a slow start, I think, from issue one, but um, issue two, I absolutely loved, and issue three as well. We've got three different things. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, you, I mean, you can't go wrong with any of that. Hey, everyone. This is Brian, the host of Inner Demons, the Ghost Rider podcast. And since 2017, Inner Demons has been the best place on the web for news, reviews, and regular discussion with our listeners about Marvel's Spirit of Vengeance, Ghost Rider. You can find us on Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and many other podcast catchers, as well as on Twitter, at Inner Demons GR. Remember, listening to your Inner Demons is not always a bad thing. Right on. See this episode's show notes for our unique promo code to get up to two months of free podcasting service with Libsyn when you sign up for a new account. Get your show on Apple and Spotify. Get helpful stats and all the support you need to sound your very best. We may as well, Rebecca, yeah. go into our segment, uh, newly named Very well uh, quotation, yeah. quotation mark. It's our loony feedback. Uh, so, Rebecca, we've, we've got a couple of yeah. um, bits of feedback from our Facebook group. Shall we just take one each? Yeah. Um, Do you want to go first or so, shall I? Um, oh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll go first. Okay. I'll leave. Uh, okay. I'll leave because actually I haven't read these, so uh, excited to yeah. excited to hear. Uh, so this is from uh, valued Petroni uh, and um, all round Moon Knight aficionado Mario Di Giacomo, and Digicom says mm -hmm. a bit of a mixed bag this week. Unlike previous issues, there weren't any graphic related problems this time, as every team delivered solid art kind of what we thought, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll focus on the story. The first tale, Wrong Turn, was amusing, but the voice of Moon Knight himself felt off. While Jake may be easygoing and quippy, Moon Knight himself usually isn't. And the last panel felt like a police squad style freeze frame for laughs. Uh, so Mario gives that one a 7 out of 10. On the other hand, the second No Empty Sky could only be a Moon Knight story as it hinges on his relationship with Konshu. If that was it, I'd give it a an 8 out of 10, but I picked up some interesting subtext, specifically that Mark himself swears allegiance to an extra-dimensional extra power, and the last panel suggests a metaphorical stabbing in the back. So I'll give it an extra 5 for 8.5 out of 10. And the final entry, Astro Nuts, it just doesn't work for me. The whole thing feels like a weird straw man attack on folks like Elon Musk, and Moon Knight barely serves a role other than to be a bit of a, a mouthpiece. I expected better from a veteran like Nascenti, five and a half out of ten. Uh, that averages out to seven out of ten. Overall, a bit of a disappointment. Uh, so, uh, I mean, that's a shame, Mario, that uh, it, it was disappointing for you. Um, I th yeah. I yeah, mean, I think they're, I, they're really good points. I mean. They are good points, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, 7 out of 10, Mario, come on. Yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, we gave it 7 out of 10. That's, that's good. <laughs> it's just we, we used to high scoring so high, you know. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this one is from Lena. Uh, I think this one was probably my favourite issue of the series so far. Story one. I love this one so much. This is what Jake should be, a no-nonsense New York cabbie who beats the crap out of the bad guys and has fun doing it. I much prefer this Jake over the ultra-violent, backstabbing version of the Bemis run. Unfortunately, it seems that the MCU version is leaning more towards the latter. But hopefully that might change or at least get fleshed out in a hopefully non-stigmatising way uh, if we get a season two. 
But anyway, this story was a ton of fun. It was also a good example of alters cooperating with each other. Ten out of ten. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Um, cool. Story two. I like this one a lot too. As an explanation of Moon Knight's relationship with Konshu and his thoughts about fate. Moon Knight's reluctance to brand the girl as a potential future fist of Konshu was definitely understandable, and it made it all the more heartbreaking that he was coerced into doing it anyway. This was a very thought-provoking and emotional story, while still having some awesome action as well. Nine out of ten. Cool. Story three. I didn't like this one as much as the other two, but with us being huge sci-fi fans in our system, that probably influenced me to like this one maybe a bit more than it deserved. It was fun to see Moon Knight in space, even if it didn't make a whole lot of sense for his character. <laughs> but hey, he's been on Mars before in the Secret Avengers run. The True. plot of the story was a bit hokey, but I like the art and the overall weirdness of it. Seven and a half out of ten. So very successful for me now. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Lena. And uh, yeah, I think you encapsulated, um, you know, at least in the latter part of your uh, your comments about the story three, the, the weirdness, um, and yeah, <laughs> the hokiness. I mean, but that's it. As as Rebecca, as you say, with these anthologies, writers are afforded the ability mm -hmm. to just go crazy and yeah. just try something different. So I, um, you know, I, I really uh, appreciate Nasendi for for doing that as well. Um, but thank you so much for your comments. Wow, so yeah. very different. Um, different perspectives but we love to to hear from you uh loony so mm. fantastic um it's, it's not too late as well please send in your thoughts there's a, there's a discussion thread on all our social yes, platforms please on do. Twitter, let us know what you Facebook. think yeah and let's just have a discussion yeah. about it I, i'd love to know which ones you thought were were better which were your, your favorites even actually branching out into the other two issues you know, because I'm already thinking, Rebecca, of the Treasury edition. I'm really yeah, yeah. kind of <laughs> thinking about all that. Um, so let us know what your your favourite ones are, and um, yeah, and what do you think of these kind of as as Rebecca puts it, like these big swings? You know, these um, really bold uh, ideas for Moon Knight. Um, I find it quite quite fascinating. Yeah, I think that it's it's really interesting, like what people have have come to it and 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 written. You know, yeah, like, I exactly. don't know what I expected going into it, but it's certainly not entirely what we got. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so, so there you go, Loonies. A uh, a nice, compact little discussion with your high priests of Konshu, uh, Rebecca. I mean, as always, it's been it's awesome fun. Yeah, like, it's really chatting with you fun. about these. Um, yeah, as, as we always say, I can't believe that we just get more and more material. We, we will be collating, as you say, uh, the likes of uh, Strange and maybe Crypto Shadow. Maybe we, I mean, that's in October. Maybe we do that. I'll like, be on holiday. You, know. you can let in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get, I'll get Eve. It's, it's her birthday. Yeah, in Halloween, so I'll That'd see what you think. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe the likes of that, because uh, it is Moon Knight, and oh god, god we got Damage Control, Miss Marvel. Oh, so I forgot about Damage Plenty Control. ahead, loonies. Yeah, wow, so plenty much. ahead. So, um, so yeah, and and a big thank you to all uh, the loonies that did join in this live broadcast as well. Uh, Mario, always appreciate your comments as well. Um, and just a little uh, announcement as well. I did uh, reach out to Carpe DM Dave, Looney Dave, who won our quotation mark. Nice. Uh, Looney feedback thing. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll get your prize. It, it will be coming. Uh, it is a bit late, but um, hopefully in the next uh, week and a half or so, uh, it should be coming your way. Uh, next phase, Rebecca, is 296. Now, this has come as a surprise for me because I was just doing the moon phases <laughs> today, just scheduling. It is a new moon wow. next week, Loonies, which means it is an Isla Ra session. Yes. We haven't done this in ages. So I have approached um, someone, um, a Petruni, uh, to see if they're keen to do an Isla Ra session. Um it might this this uh, episode comes out on a, a Wednesday or Thursday, uh, depending where you are. Um, so the next episode might be a little bit longer, just because need a little bit more time to 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 um, post production, mm -hmm. um, do that stuff, and and also uh, there are four desert island books to to read. Um, so <laughs> it's more um, homework, right? It's more homework, um, but I, I I love it. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get someone um, for I, the Isla Ra session. I know there are a couple of people who are pretty keen. It's all to do with scheduling, um, whether we get that happening or not. So hopefully we can, um, but please keep uh, an eye out for that. 
Uh, as always, a little flash here, a big thank you to our Patroonies, and we do have um, uh, plenty of them, so a huge thank you, executive producers and co-producers of the show. A big thanks to Odin, Daniel, Drew, Justin, Frank, Derek, Kyle, uh, Wayne, Jordan, Josh, James, Anthony, Russell, Michael, Mario, Gavin, Matthew, and Jonathan. Jonathan's upset the... the um, the the last uh, member. Oh my newest gosh! Some of these yeah. newest. Sorry, <laughs> and I'm sorry. I'm just looking. Some of these. Look, I've just started, some of the names have dropped off. Wow. I'll have to fix that. <laughs> Something. Sorry. <laughs> but th a big thank you. Uh, sorry, missing out there, Matthew and Jonathan. A big shout out to you guys. Uh, also, as well, you can contact us on email. Feedback at itkmoonlight.com. Uh, we've got a website, itkmoonlight.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook, and our Twitter handle, Instagram, is just check out at itkmoonlight.com. Um, also, as well, a uh, a big thank you to our principal sponsors, of course, Frank Dukes. Uh, if you check out Moonlight Visions with a Z on Instagram, Odin Odin Swords Drinking Marvel Podcast. Mm. He does a podcast with his brother, uh, Daniel Doings Fringe Night. Go support that on patreoncom slash Fringe Night Twenty Seven, um, and Drew Tombs with his music on SoundCloud.com slash Tombs with a Z or Lurk Music with a CK .com. And uh, CLZ Comics doing great great stuff. I love updating my database. Check out collectors.com as well as Dreamland Comics. Use the code Moon and get 20% off their stuff. And finally, we all part of we are part of the collective. Rebecca does fantastic work over at Rebecca. I've queued up uh, Batman and Two Face. Oh, yeah, I think. Uh, so I will uh, be listening intently. Um, any we just recorded remarks. the new one today, so. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. We'll look forward to that too as well. But check out Rebecca on other podcasts such as the DCAU podcast and Last Sons of Crypt. Oh, and Sons of the Dragon, um, Immortal Iron Fist podcast. So, uh, yes. Uh, so, Looney's, uh, with that, sorry, I think I hear Finn. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, definitely heard with someone. that. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for listening. And as always, may Conchu watch over the denizens of the night. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Catch you later. Bye. See ya. Moon Knight and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Materials used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners. From the time of his hatching, he was different. A potentially brilliant scholar who dreaded the structured environment of school. He educated himself in the streets, taking whatever work was available, formulating his philosophy of self from what he had learned of the world about him. And then the cosmic axis shifted, and that world changed. Suddenly, he was stranded in a universe he could not fathom. Without warning, he became a strange fowl in an even stranger land. Welcome to the one, and for some reason only, podcast about Marvel Comics' greatest talking duck, Howard the Duck, trapped in a world he never made. Hosted by myself, Noel, who's loved Howard since he was a kid. And me, Russell, who's not new to comics, but is new to Howard. We go through a couple issues from Howard's Marvel comic book history with some creator backgrounds, storied histories, and the weird world of 1970s comic books to today's. Get ducked up in a world he never made. Trapped in a world, the Howard the Duck podcast. Wow! Proud members of the collective.